A lot of you have asked me on how to properly expose Canon C70 footage, so in this video I will show you three different examples. One scenario where we are indoors with just available light, one where we are outdoors with just available light, and one where we are indoors with an external light source. Before we start talking about exposure, let's cover the basics. Number one, I shoot everything in C-Log2 Cinema Gamut for the most dynamic range. And if you're interested in all my settings, I made a full video about this recently. Number two, the Canon C70 has a base ISO of 800. And that means that it has the most dynamic range when shooting in ISO 800, especially in the highlights. So when we can, we try to keep it at ISO 800. Now let's talk about the three different exposure tools that I use to judge my exposure on the Canon C70. My number one tool is the waveform monitor. And this is a great tool to judge your exposure on the Canon C70. Here we have a range that goes from zero to 100. If you go below zero, that means you're crushing our shadows and there's no information left in the dark areas of our image. On the other end of the spectrum, if we go higher than 100, that means that we're losing all of our information in the highlights. That's also commonly referred to as clipping our highlights. And you can see that when the green waveforms start flatlining. The measurement that our scale is in is called IRE. My next favorite exposure tool is false colors. And if we press that button, we see a range of different kind of colors. And those different colors mean different things. Red means that we're clipping our highlights, whereas blue means that we're crushing our shadows. Everything in between shows the different kind of IRE values that we see in our image. And the last tool that I use to judge my exposure is just by eye, and this is the quickest and fastest way to do so. And here's to note, we will never look at our lock footage. So when we're using the internal LCD screen, we will always apply a LUT to it, and we can do so within the menu. But careful, when using the external monitor, we will not use the view assist, because for some reason, this is not the same LUT that is also being used on the LCD screen, but something else. So what we do is we take the original C-Log to work 709 LUT that we can find on the Canon website, and we add this to our external monitor. And again, I talk about this a little bit more in my whole settings video. But now let's talk about how to actually expose Canon C70 footage. In order to adjust the exposure on our Canon C70, we have four different ways to do so. We can change our ISO, we can change our shutter speed, we can adjust our aperture, and we can use ND filters. Here's to note that three out of those four things will also affect other things in our image. The shutter angle will affect our motion blur, the aperture will affect the out of focus areas in our shot, and the ISO will affect our dynamic range. So I would always leave our shutter angle at 180 degrees unless you have a really specific reason to change it, and I would also leave our aperture for a desired look instead of just adjusting our exposure. Our ISO we can actually use to adjust our exposure, but if you don't have to, just leave it at 800. So the best way to actually adjust our exposure is by using our ND filters. In our first example, we are outdoors with just available light, and I wanted to open up our aperture to 2.0 so you have a nice blurry background. Since this was obviously way too overexposed, I wanted to add some ND filters, and I started with around six stops of ND. And this is a good time to how to expose skin tones and IRE values. As a general rule of thumb, skin tone should lie between the 40 and 60 RIE value mark, but that really depends on the complexion of the skin and your personal liking. I would say that most Caucasian skin looks good at around 50, but again, this is not a hard and fast rule and it also really depends on your personal style. I, for example, I like my skin tones a little overexposed sometimes because it gives this high key feeling, especially with female models, because the image looks a little bit more soft. All right, with all these lights, it's really hot in here, so I need to get rid of this jacket. Much better. On this little waveform monitor, it's often quite hard to actually tell where her skin tones lie, so we have an additional tool that we can use. So when going into our waveform settings, we can switch from line to line plus spot. And this will add this little red box that shows us what we're seeing in red colors. And this is really fiddly to align and it's not 100% accurate, so I rarely use it, but I wanted to show you this tool. So if you want to get familiar with the waveforms and the IRE values, this might be a good starting point. As we can see in our example here with six stops of ND, her skin tone is actually a little over the 60 mark and this is really on the high end. Again, I personally like it a bit brighter, but this is maybe a little bit too bright. So now let's check our false color to see what we're looking at. Usually on Caucasian skin, you want to have the darker parts in gray, whereas you want to have the brighter parts of the skin in a little bit of pink. In our image, I would actually say that we could get away with this, but it's definitely a bit on the brighter side. However, if we add two more stops of ND, this is definitely too much and we don't see any pink in her skin anymore and we're also underexposing her jacket a little bit. And just for reference, if we go down to four stops of ND, then our entire background is blown out and everything is way too bright and we can see this on the false color because everything is red. So one way to tackle this would be to go to eight stops of ND and then raising our ISO. Why are we not just lowering our ISO? Because that will give us less dynamic range 
in the highlights and since we do have a lot of highlights in the background I would suggest not doing so. So yes in certain situation I would actually suggest raising your ISO even if you're using ND filters instead of lowering your ISO to retain all the dynamic range in the highlights. So in order to get our skin tones to around 50 IRE we could go to eight stops of ND and then raise the ISO or we can stay at six NDs and lower the ISO a little bit. It really depends on how much you need to raise the ISO. In our example here it's really close where I would probably go to 640 ISO instead of just going to 2000 ISO because it's just this little nuance. But again, I usually want to stay at 800 or higher when we're shooting outdoors with highlights in the background. But again, it's a little bit of a nuance game. In our next scenario, we are indoors with just available light and there are no highlights in the background. So how do we deal with this situation? Now we're using a 35 millimeter 1.4 with a speed booster so I can open up my aperture all the way to a 1.0 and I wanna get as much blurry background as possible. So this is what we're going to do. As you can see, this is overexposed so we need to add some ND filters. By adding two subs of ND, her skin tones lie around the 60 to 70 mark and this is a bit too much. But by adding two more stops of ND, we underexpose our skin and we don't want that either because now we're at around 40 IRE. Here we could raise our ISO again and introduce more noise, but we don't necessarily have to do this because there is no bright highlights in the background that we have to worry about blowing out. So we can go down to two stops of ND and lower our ISO to 400. And this will get us exactly to the exposure levels we want. And by lowering our ISO, we also have the benefit of having a little bit less noise. When it comes to lowering our ISO, I would always just stop at 400. I would never go lower than 400. And I would also only go to 400 in certain situations like this indoor setting. Checking our false color, this looks really well exposed, especially on her skin tones, because we introduce a bit of pink color on the bright parts of her skin, but the rest is gray. So now our last scenario is here in the studio where we do have the option to use an external light source. At two stops of ND and an aperture of 1.0, this image is definitely overexposed. But what we want to do here is we don't want to focus on the skin tones, but we want to focus on the background first. Using our false color, we can see that even at four stops of ND filters, we still have a lot of red in the background, so our background is still overexposed. So we're going to add two more stops of ND, and now our background actually looks pretty decent. But looking at the dark side of her face, it's definitely underexposed and so are parts of her hair. So now we're going to add in our key light and we started at around 20% and then gradually raised it all the way to where we had our skin tones where we wanted them to be. So now we push the light to around 80% and we have a properly exposed background, but we also have her skin tones at the right IRE value that is pleasing to our eyes. And when switching our light off and on and looking at the waveforms, we can clearly see how her IRE values on her skin tones are dropping down and then back up again. So this is it and let's summarize what we learned today. When there's highlights in our shots, let's try to stay at an ISO of 800 or higher and not go lower than 800 to preserve the most dynamic range. The best way to adjust our exposure without affecting any other parts of our image is by using the internal ND filters or an external light source. Skin tones, depending on complexity and personal preferences, should lie between the 40 and 60 IRE mark. So this is it. I hope you liked this video and if you did then please give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow. Subscribe for more and since we know now how to properly expose for Canon C-Log2, how about we learn how to properly color correct and color grade it? Because I recently uploaded a video on how to do so. You can check out and watch next and I hope to see you on the next one.